Hi everyone, welcome back. This time I'll be covering the I2C triggering function of the MSO19. Last time we covered the topics on how to capture, trigger, and decode the I2C signal. This is a relatively easy task when you only have one slave device hanging on the I2C bus. What happens when you have more than one device? I've attached a PCF8574 I2C bus expander and on the output, I have, a, have eight LEDs attached to it. For every bit that you set to high on the I/O expander, since it's a it's an open drain, so it will sink to ground, and then the LED will go on. And I've attached this bus expander on the same bus as the um, 24LC64E prompt that we have. Notice how it hangs from the Arduino to the E prom to the bus expander. I also noticed that I removed the, the um, pull-up resistors from the, um, the EEPROM and moved it over here by the bus expander because you need to end terminate the I2C bus. And for every, so the task with what I'm doing this time is I've expanded just three lines, actually well maybe four lines right here so what I'm doing is for every time a single ca a character gets read um, from the E square prom, I'm shifting the IO pin by one. And I'm exclusive ordering this so I can set it to, to zero because the, um, zero turns the LED on. And I put a 10 millisecond delay. So you, s you see that the bits are rotating and we're reading at the same time. If you look at the I screw C bus, you see that we are. I, I have a stop on the character S, which is 0x73, and you can see the bits here, it's walking. This zero here is walking. But we don't have one walking to the point that we actually trigger with the bit falling low. To see where the LED is, you can, you can put it on, on the DSO, and we have a trigger on falling. Speed slows this down a bit. You can see for every, for every few packet you get a data read and then you, this is the data read coming back from um, the EEPROM and this is the setting the I.O. This is really slow so let's speed this up a bit. In fact let's get rid of the let's get rid of the delay. Download the Arduino. You still see it. You still have a certain amount of setup time within the, um, the data. Actually, here's the other delay. Let's get rid of this guy too. You see the delay? This is the 10 millisecond delay that we see here. So I'm going to get rid of that. Now it's all gone. If you look at the data, it's just one jumbo. The LED looks like it's going crazy. And slow this down even more. You can see that we're recycling the data. Ah, I forgot to remove this guy here. This is a um, at the buffer read. I'm reading 28 bytes back at a time. This I'll show this one later. So let's um, let's clock the data in. So we have data coming through. We're writing now. The LED is going really fast. Uh, we have data shifting through. We get a couple bytes rewrite. And and it's every eight. Okay, so let's trigger on the I square C. Let's move the I square C. This is what's triggered on S. But the I O the the address. The reason this is the address for the um, the E prompt. Let's switch it to the address for 
for the IO expander. This is what the IO expander looks like. It's basically the I2C in, these are the output ports, these are addresses, the tied of the ground because I only have one device. And I'm using a service mount because that's what's what I have on hand. So it's a 20 pin device and I have it mounted on a little brip on the little uh, experimenter's board so I can bond it out, it makes it easier for me. So you see the, the seven bits, the I square C, the address line. So let's move down to the actual data being transmitted. The address for the device is 0100. Zero, zero, zero. And then since we have these three by these three sets of zeros will be zero 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 across. We're gonna be writing into it, so that's gonna be a zero or so, so it's pretty much zero one zero 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 zero. And we're gonna we're gonna trap this guy when it's um when this LED goes low, this is attached to P7, which is the last bit. So to set up the ice to set up the scope, let's set up the address for the bit for the um, IO expander is zero one zero zero. 0, 0, 0, 0. We're triggering on that since everything is it's one on this guy. We're only the last one is zero, so go one, zero, 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 and we should have a trigger now. What is it? Oh, sorry, zero, one, zero. Back up to this again. Zero, one, 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 one. So if it's all going high and we're triggering on this bit going low, you see? And we have it lock the trigger cursor. Zoom in a bit. Our bit pattern, this is our address, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is the acknowledge. And then the out output data is first bit 0. That's exactly what we have here. Every other bit is all high. And you get a, an accurate lock, and that's when it finish over here, when it outputs that byte, and then it switch over to setting the address, reading the data, because you can see data is shifting here because it's reading back. It's every other byte, so you have no idea. So it, it varies. One thing you need, to, one thing to you need to know is when you set up the I square C trigger, the start of the packet starts the um, the trigger. I guess a trigger circuit and it loads up 32 bits worth. You can load up with don't care, but the trigger circuit resets itself every time the stop conditions encounter. So if you have data packets smaller than 32, you should load the first two bytes. So this is fine. We're getting an accurate read. And if you look at the I square C data, We're getting a 7F and that's the address for the chip for IO expander and this is the address for um, this is the, the bit pattern that we're sending out. So what happens if we need to we have a big clumps of data and we need to zero in on just one very very specific section. For example instead of reading sending out um, one address, reading one byte, one address, reading a byte. What happens if I, if I do one by one by read, IO expander, and I decide to read an entire page? So this one will read a 28 bytes and then to a single buffer. And we're still going to crank this up at full speed. So you see the data activity is just going crazy here. Um, you still get an accurate lock on the I2C. The reason is I2C triggering engines in independent of the sampling speed. It's actually running natively at 50 mega samples per second. So anything slower than 50 meg, it'll grab. And then since your I2C bus typically doesn't go over a meg, we can lock onto it without any problem. So I'm going to try try to trigger on. Um, the word that I send out, the buffer is preloaded with this is data from the EEPROM. We're going to trigger on um, the I square C pattern for data, which is if you go to, let's see, if you go to ASCII I square C table, 
data is 64, 61, 74, and 61. So we're going to load up 64, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and 61, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. T is 74, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and A is 61, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and we have a lock. Actually, no, we don't have a lock. It's missing. Oh, I spelled something wrong. Zero one zero zero. Ah, here sixty one, not forty one. Boom. Zero one zero zero, and then zero. Now we have a lock. See the trigger circuit does work. You give it a, a, a trigger that doesn't exist; it doesn't work. Speed this up. Uh, let's see what it looks like on the I square C triggering. Uh, let's slow this down a bit. Uh, let's see. Here's the decoding engine. We're decoding the I2C data. Uh, let's find our trigger, which is the red. So it'll be right leading up to the red. So let's try. Let me just stop this. Okay. Eight. That's a space, 20 is a space. And let's find the red. So, 61, 74, 61. Where'd it go? It's off by one, and probably because the balance couldn't decode accurately. Let's see, 22 sample, go, stop, I need more sample, there you go, 64, 61, 74, 61 data, and there you have it, we're using the whole 32 bits of triggering on that, we can actually, we can also put some X's in here, so we can trigger anything D, A, unknown, A, and we hit go, it's the same thing, it will still trigger on data because that's a unknown with don't care. And that's it for I2C triggering. Thank you for watching. See you next time.